Hey guys, I just finished watching Insidious for the first time, actually. It's a very popular movie, so I, it's kind of weird that I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, so 2010 movie directed by James Wan or Wan. I really need to, like, put that into Google Translate to see how it's pronounced. Well, I guess it's not always accurate, but... Um, yeah, so it's the same... It's the same duo from Aquaman, so we've got um, Patrick Wilson and James Wan again. So, this I really like this one. I had a really good time with it. Um, there, I'm still going to discuss some negatives, but really, I don't really care about those negatives too much. It's just, I, I just really desperately, you know, want to be critical about every movie I watch. I get more enjoyment when I'm able to criticize things. It's not because I hate them. It's because I want, I want there to be a high bar. I want things to get better, because I know this, this series has, like, a lot of sequels, so. So basically, this is about, and there will be some spoilers in this, by the way. Um... So this family moves into a new house, and the house seems haunted, and it's really freaking the wife out. And um, their one of their children falls off a ladder and falls into a coma for kind of unexplainable reasons. It turns out it's not really because of the fall. You know, he he appears completely fine physically. So she she's seeing things, and she tries to get her husband to believe her, but. You know, honestly, it's kind of hard to believe what she's saying without any proof whatsoever. So he's very reluctant. But eventually she pleads her case and he's like, okay, fine, we'll move. So they move to another house. But the haunting continues. So it turns out it's not... The house was never haunted. Um, it was the boy who's haunted the whole time. And he's basically stuck in this other alternate dimension called the Further, where all of the tormented spirits and evil demons linger. Um, because they're not in like they're not in the plane of existence anymore, so they just hang out out there, and uh, when they see an opportunity, they go for it. So this kid is an opportunity because he has a bloodline of people that can astral project themselves. See, it's very cool. I think it's a really cool plot. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh it's basically this red demon guy is the main antagonist, and I think he works really well because. He is practical effects, for the most part, and when he's not, it still catches me off guard. I think that mix of practical and CGI works really well. I think if you only rely on practical, it can seem a little bit outdated, and if you only rely on CGI, it just looks ridiculous. So I think the mix of the two was pretty good. So, like, for example, sometimes it's just an actor who's just standing beside someone in a really creepy manner and completely catches you off guard. And other times it will probably, I assume it's CGI, where it will, like, switch to him crawling on the wall or something. So, a very good mix there. And in general, the movie isn't, like, terrifying or anything, but it's definitely creepy and, you know, lots of suspense and intrigue and mystery. So, yeah. It's not gonna, like, traumatize you like other horror movies are, but honestly, I didn't want that. This is a movie like It that I watch because I like the characters and I like the story. It's not, I'm not watching it because I want to be scared half to death, you know? Like, I watched a movie like The Grudge, which scared me half to death, but I didn't give it a high score because, you know... Horror movies still need to have the basics down, right? And that, that movie was lacking the basics. This one absolutely nails the basics. So I think the characters are very strong. I think they're well-developed. I think the chemistry is good. I think the relationships are very strong. Um, the acting was very good as well, I thought. Especially some of those are kind of awkward scenes probably to shoot in real life, but it comes off 100% um, good. While the movie, some of the scares can be a little bit goofy at times, um, I feel... I'm glad this movie did not go the campy route, okay? I'm glad they took their own ridiculousness seriously because I would have had a bad time if they were making a joke of it. Um, so, yeah, there is some goofiness, but that's because of the era it was shot in and because they have so many actors. They have so many different actors in different villain roles that it's hard for them all to land the same as each other. Like, the Red Demon's the scariest, and then you've got, like, there's, like, random witches and zombies that aren't really doing it for me towards the bottom. So, yeah. I don't really hold it against the film, though. So, yeah, this is a this is a good movie. What else? Okay, so also, I really like the music choice. It was very creepy, the music. I think the color grading was perfect. This is the first time I'm gonna give a positive for having a washed out colors. I think the color grading, like, with the whole gray, like, green, red, blue, all looks a little bit gray in this. It's on purpose, and I thought that was very cool. So I'm glad it looks washed out. I think it's perfect. It makes the red guy look way more... He stands out. You can see him, like, hiding in the background of certain scenes and stuff. So, yeah. Just, it's a good movie. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I like it a lot. Is it, like, some masterpiece? No, but it's, it's a fun time, and it's definitely one of the better, above-average horror movies I've watched. So, I'm pretty happy with it. The ending was... 
a little bit strange, but since there is a sequel, I'm not going to hold it against it. I'm going to go watch Insidious 2 right now, and I will decide whether that ending gets a pass or not permanently. So yeah, thanks for watching. Highly recommend Insidious. See you next time.